we're producing more energy than we consume on the suite, which is uh, a two-people suite upstairs and a functioning uh, studio workshop downstairs. But the excess uh, production of the thermal and the PV uh, is uh, being exported to the primary residence, um, where we, on the PV side, on the electrical side, we're almost positive on both buildings. On the thermal side, not quite. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Solar thermal heating systems are one of the most mature renewable energy technologies. After the energy crisis in the 1970s, Israel embraced solar thermal so much so that today 90% of the homes have solar hot water systems. But then along came cheap solar PV, which seemed to take some of the wind out of the solar thermal sails. But despite this, solar thermal is alive and well. Today we talk to Tom Jackman of Simple Solar, a Calgary company that has installed 80 solar thermal systems in the last eight years. Hello, I'm Tom Jackman from Simple Solar here in Calgary. We provide solar energy systems for residential applications. We provide both solar thermal systems and solar photovoltaic systems. Solar photovoltaic make electricity and solar thermal make heat and our homes need both. We're standing in front of a laneway house in Ramsey of Calgary, and uh, that's a new build that has both solar electric systems and solar thermal systems that we provided. When Jackman started Simple Solar, he was only installing solar thermal hot water systems. But today, more often than not, he installs solar thermal alongside with solar PV. So how did Jackman decide on the mix of solar PV and solar thermal that you see on this laneway home? The homeowner wanted as much solar as he could get. And in fact, we make quite a bit more solar power than just the laneway house uses. And the excess electricity and the excess heat is transferred to the house uh, through a piping and, and wiring system. The photovoltaic system is flush mounted on the roof. You can't see it that well, but it's, it's there. There's five and a half kilowatts of solar photovoltaics. These six different solar thermal collectors, three on the wall and another three up above, uh, total 12 and a half kilowatts of solar heating uh, capacity. According to Tom Jackman, the advantage of solar thermal over solar PV is energy density. The roof of this garage suite produces more heat and electricity than the suite needs. It's net positive exporting excess heat and electricity to the main house. This integrated approach plays on the benefits of solar thermal and solar PV and overcomes one of the refrains that solar thermal is too expensive. GreenBuilderAdvisor.com went as far as to pronounce solar thermal is dead thanks to the dramatically reduced cost of solar PV. But Jackman says his patented design has simplified and reduced the cost of solar thermal making it competitive. We have developed a system that's very reliable um, and very cost effective. Most people don't do that. Well, nobody else does that. So they've got high pressure, high temperature resistant line sets and components, and that's what drives the expense. It's not the collectors, and it's certainly not the tank. Both items are mass produced, you know, all over the world. It's the piece in between that is driving the expense. And we've optimized that, and that's our, that's our key to success. So how does solar thermal work? The evacuated collector tubes that Jackman uses get their name from the vacuum space inside the tube. Here's a small version of one. Uh, you can see that there's two layers of glass in this, in this tube and the air has been evacuated out between those layers so it's an insulator. The vacuum is an insulator and so the temperature outside doesn't really affect it too much and the sunlight easily comes right in, hits this dark coating and is transition to heat and all that heat gets focused to the inside and comes out on this pipe so the tube so what's inside yeah there's um, uh, in the installed versions there's heat transfer plates that transition the heat from the side of the glass where it's created to this copper pipe and 
these things get really, really hot. You get, if you leave this out in the sun and touch this, you'll, you'll burn your skin right off. That's one spicy meatball. Instead of using complicated sensors to turn the system on and off, Jackman has paired his design with a solar PV system to keep it running when it needs to run. That flow happens because of uh, previously mentioned uh, photovoltaic powered pump. So the two little PV panels on the outside energize the pump when sun's shining and is creating heat. And the brighter the sun shines, the more heat's being made and the faster the pump runs. From the collectors, a glycol mixture carries the heat to the storage tank. One issue with glycol is that when it reaches above 90 degrees Celsius, it begins to degrade and eventually has to be replaced. A typical solar thermal system uses expensive sensors to detect and regulate the glycol's temperature. Instead, Jackman uses a simple thermostatic valve connected to a heat dissipator to keep the glycol at temperature. And as the tank gets hotter, the glycol gets hotter until the point where the glycol hits 90 degrees Celsius. And at that point, we have a control valve that says, hey, this is getting too hot. And that valve opens up and directs glycol to the heat dissipator. And we have the heat dissipator tucked in behind the collector here, right up in there. And it runs the whole length of the collection array. And that's how we dissipate extra heat. And that maintains the glycol at a maximum of 90 degrees, which is below the degradation point. So our glycol will last the life of the system. Cornelius Coster owns the Ramsey Laneway home. Jackman originally proposed a much more modest solar system for the garage suite, but Coster, himself a green energy advocate, insisted on using as much space as possible. We basically built the suite to a maximum height uh, on the uh, on the eaves trough side, and then by city regulations we are allowed to uh, extend that height for another 1.6 meters, which basically is exactly the height of the, uh, the top bank of uh, the thermal tubes on the roof. And um, then we added another three banks of PV, uh, PV thermal on the face, uh, on the south facing side. So the wall component of the thermal is basically for winter production because of the angle and the top uh, bank of thermal is uh, ideal for summer production. By mixing solar thermal with solar PV, Coster was able to pack a lot of energy production on his roof. So why do this? Again, the, the, the passion for uh, renewables and the environment, combined with obviously some financial calculations, made it clear to me that it was affordable to actually spend and invest money on renewables, and in this case, uh, PV solar and thermal. Uh, on a long-term basis. Want to learn more about this award-winning net positive garage suite in Calgary, Alberta? Check out our blog, podcast, and photos at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Cornelius Coster's net positive garage suite uses solar thermal heat and solar PV to provide all of its energy. For a completely different approach, check out our story on a carbon neutral garage suite in Edmonton, Alberta that gets all of its electricity from solar PV and its heat from a solar airwall and heat pump system.